the, uh, as Stephen did a great intro, I'm Sam, I'm from Smart Pension. No S at the end? That's workplace pensions. So actually that's the thing I'm here to talk about, which is, you've learned a lot from Tiana, you've learned a lot from Charlie, who I think has just skedaddled. Um, I'm not going to teach you as much, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to teach you a bit about disruption, because that's what we did. We spent um, at least a year thinking about what we wanted to build. The, the, the product had to come first. We've heard that quite a few times already this evening. Had to get a good product. And we're in a space where the people we're up against have been doing this for literally hundreds of years. It's not a, um, it's, it's, it's not a new space. So the only thing we could do was disrupt. So um, we're working in a space which is the workplace pension where everybody has to have a, a pension scheme. If you're an employer or an employee, you have to, um, if you're an employer, you have to offer your employees a workplace pension. So I'm going to start with this. Is there anybody in the room who is an employer? Is, can you put your hands up if you employ people? So if you don't mind, I'm going to take your name. So what's, what's your name? Sorry? Andrew. 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 Okay. Um, at some point, you will be sent a letter from the pensions regulator. And maybe you haven't seen the letter yet, but you might have seen this chap. He's, he's called Worky. Does, does, does anybody recognize this guy? Hands up if, you, if you've seen this, this, so a couple of hands. It's, it's, it's embarrassing because it's not everybody, and yet the Department of Work and Pensions, clever people down here, have spent nine million pounds on this chap. Um, that's quite a bit of cash. Um, but anyway, they're advertising the fact that uh, at some point Andrew's going to get a letter, and he needs to know what to do with that letter. He's got a set up a workplace pension for his, for his employees. And, I'm going to skip through this slide quite quickly, but to give you a, a sense of it, every single employer in the UK, that top line, has to offer their employee, employees a pension. And um, between now and the, and the rest of the process of employers who exist today setting up their scheme, there are another million companies who have yet to do this. Um, they, uh, employers are given a particular date by which they have to set up their pension scheme, and that's called a staging date. That date is defined by the number of employees you had back in April in 2012. So if your business wasn't set up then, you're, you're going to come later in the process. If you're Sainsbury's, you're at the very beginning, you've got thousands of employees, you're going to be at the beginning. So 2012, before Smart Pension even existed, people were going through the pipe and setting up their pension schemes. And the premise behind this is that in the UK, uh, we're all good hard-working people, but we're rubbish at saving for our futures. We, none of us are putting pensions aside. If anybody's Australian in this room, and I know you're South African, but there's, a, there's a, an Australian bent. These people have been doing it for 20 years. They, they, they know all about this. Workplace pensions is not a new thing. Um, we're all getting older. We're not putting enough aside. So the idea is, let's start, let's start at the very beginning. Let's put some money aside. The, so the, you set up a pension scheme. The employer puts in, at the moment, 1%, and the employee puts in 1% and the employee gets tax relief on that 1%. So it's a, it's a way to incentivize saving some cash. And over time, the pension percentages have to go up. It's not defined by me, it's not defined by uh, anyone else, it's defined by the Department of Work and, Work, Department of Work and Pensions who are, uh, and, and illustrated by the um, pensions regulator. So um, this, this graph, um, hopefully quite simple graph, gives you a sense of what has happened so far. 30% of businesses, and that goes back to 2012, have created a pension scheme, and, and there's another 70%. That's the known businesses who have been set up and have to go through this process. So there's a lot to come. It's a, it's a process that uh, was typically done by paperwork. You, you'd send in letters, and you'd wait for the, the post to come back and forth, and you'd have to sign bits of, doc, bits of paperwork. It, and, and this is the point at which we realized there was an opportunity because, yes, Sainsbury's could spend some time, get their accountant to sort this out and organize the paperwork, and they had weeks to plan this. In fact, the pensions regulator recommend that you do this, um, you do this it was six or seven months before your actual date, and you've got plenty of time to do that, and you can do that when you've got an accountant. But if you're a, um, if Andrew's starting out, and he's, it's just him, he's probably going to do this towards the, the, the last date he has to do it. It's a bit like a tax return. You do that on the 30th, don't you? I mean, people do that. Um, so we wanted a, a solution that's, that would cater for that person who likes to do the, the tax return at the last possible moment. Um, so this is, this is Andrew. 
Um, I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't find a yes, more recent yeah. picture of you. Um, <laughs> we, um, you've, you've, you've got a few things you've got to do. Um, you've got to work out your staging date. You've got to create a, a workplace pension. You've got to assess all your employees. What the hell does that mean? You, you've got to work out whether they're old enough to go to the scheme, whether they are earning enough, whether they are working in U the UK. All of those variables change. And to mix it up a bit, every year, DWP changed the variables to decide how much money is, allows you to earn to get, to get you into the pension scheme. It's complicated stuff. If you've got a, an accountant, they're going to work it out for you. And again, if you've got time beforehand, they can organize that for you. But if you don't have time, if you're running, you're running, uh, you're running on the, the last possible minutes, which lots of us are doing, then you may run into issues. Um, you've also got to send statutory letters, not just regular letters, hey, you're in a pension scheme, but you'll write a letter in a particular way, using particular language. Bizarre but true. Um, you've then got to pay pension contributions every payroll. So if you, if you run a bar and you pay people weekly, you've got to do this four times a month. That's going to get boring. Um, you've got to manage the employee membership. That simply means some people want to leave, some people want to join. You become a traffic cop. You've got to remember all of this. Then afterwards, you've got to do you have to complete a declaration of compliance. This is, this is, you only have to do this once after you set up the pension scheme, but you have to do it. If you don't do it, you get fined. You actually get fined uh, a fixed penalty notice by the pensions regulator, and if you carry on ignoring that piece of paperwork, or any of the points above, you get any of them wrong, you get fined. But if you carry on ignoring, you, you get an escalated fine. They carry on charging you. So there's a big incentive for Andrew to get all these things right in time for the particular stage of it. Um, this is one of those lovely letters. The TPR, the pensions regulator, send out three of these beforehand. So hopefully you'll get one of these, um, but you won't necessarily know what to do. You're going to go, well, how do I go about this? Pensions, pensions. I, I, you, know a few, you know a few brands, and these are some of the obvious um, incumbents. You're gonna, you're gonna, you, you will have heard of some of these people. I mean, these guys, legal general, they have literally been around for a couple hundred years, so you're probably going to have heard of them. Um, but this is the typical protocol for exchanging data between them. And it's not something <coughs> that is efficient, especially if, if it's Friday night and you know, your stage date's the next day and you've got to get this done. That's not going to work, especially if you consider this graph, that 70% piece. We've got a million businesses to go through. That's a lot of pieces of paperwork through the tax machine. So this is the disruption piece. We, we realized that it wasn't about the fin in fintech. It was about the tech in, te in fintech. We were, had to provide a technical solution. It, it, it couldn't be done with one of these. It, just, it, it wasn't going to work. So um, enter smart pension. So the, the bit that's important here, I suppose, is, is the word smart rather than the pension piece. Because we're a technical solution that facilitates getting over the line and investing money. Um, we're an API first. Now, everybody in this room is going to be familiar with an API, what that means, how that works. Um, it's not true of the people who we are up against. So when we introduced an API, it was novel. Um, we're an API that plugs into our various applications, that I've, I've sort of given a, a few screenshots of them here, but also our APIs are completely exposed. So you can integrate with our API, and many do, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Well, the, um, this lovely young lady who's looked very organized has been through what I was just about to demonstrate, which was a, uh, uh, a sign-up flow which actually had young George going through the sign-up flow and signing up uh, his pension scheme for, for Tide. Um, it's, it's a very simple process. You, you go through, you, you, you fill out your, your, your personal details. We go off to um, Companies House. We grab um, Companies House data through the Judil API, which is a fantastic, very fast API. And it, it pulls in the uh, registration details, the uh, the, uh, all of the directors who, who, who might need to, to um, create a pension scheme and um, importantly gets all the data we need to compile that into a legal contract called a participation agreement. So we capture this data all in the background and at the end of the sign-up flow um, present the user with a click here and sign. And that, that process is, is a good 90 seconds. And this is the bit that I was trying to talk about, the, the disruption piece. You go from two weeks or fax machines or setting it way in advance to a 90 second sign flow and getting, getting yourself to a point where you're, you're ready to go. And in fact, true, there are some other pieces that you have to do, but the end to end process of using our, our platform is 30 minutes, not several weeks. Um, so our platform is a self-serve platform. So we have um, 
some of our competitors have 200, 220 customer service people. We, we've gone from, we, we, we don't have that many, it's absolutely clear. Um, and the, the reason for that is that we have a, a very intuitive, very easy to use self-serve platform. And again, to, going back to, to, to Ty's point, you're looking at creating a good product, you need to have something that is easy for people to use and very quickly, quickly obvious for them to use, because otherwise they are going to phone you, and that's where it gets, gets expensive. So um, our platform, uh, we've done the setup piece, very quick setup. You can add employees, you can assess the stuff. We do all the maths in the background for you and produce the results. You can um, choose to do the maths yourself and, and tell us what you've done, or uh, we'll do it for you. And um, finally, we'll give you all the information you need to go off and fill out your declaration of compliance. Not very, that piece is not very exciting, but it does avoid that all-important fight, which everyone's trying to, to, to skip. Um, we've done a lot of work making sure we're compatible with some of these names. These are, these are payroll products. This is not a very exciting area, but I'm, I'm a little bit evangelical about this piece because um, our relationship with these people is we're intrinsically tied. Everyone in this room who's got a payslip has, has been paid as a result of one of these applications or other ones. I, I couldn't list them all here. Um, and, and if we are going to calculate pension contributions, it's a percentage of your salary. So it has to come out of one of these products. So as a result, we spend a lot of time um, focusing on this, making our API exposed so that people can bake in our product into their software. So they don't even have to come and visit our website. They don't even have to contact our customer service team because they're speaking to one of these people who have, um, when, they, when, they, when they've got an issue, and, and they're pressing the, they're pressing a button and the, and the money just appears in our, our contributions table and we're invested for them. So it, 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 uh, it's a skip away from what is traditional, which is sending paperwork and fax machines. Um, we've done it not just for, we've produced an application not just for uh, employers to do this themselves, but also for um, advisors, IFAs, accountants, even payroll bureaus, anybody who looks after their client and, 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 uh, and you're, as an employer, Andrew might have uh, a payroll bureau who, who makes sure that his staff get paid on time. And this, this is important because um, it's still a service-led industry and these people want to uh, make money. So we offer a free service, but they might charge the clients. So we want to make sure we cover it from both angles. And finally, as an employee, um, you can log in and manage your pension scheme. You can select the fund you want your money to go into. You can change the uh, percentage you want it to be in. We make it very easy for everyone to interact with our services. Um, so to round up where we, where we are, we've um, produced a sound flow nice and fast. These are our, our three kind of manifestos, fast, secure, and free. Um, it's an automated process that uh, makes sure that you don't have to think, you don't have to know what pensions mean. No one really wants to know how this works, but if you don't do it, you get fined. So we make the automated process. It's nice and secure. Now, that's secure in quite a few different ways. We are quite literally pension regulator approved. If you go onto their website, uh, there's a link to our website from them. So we, we actually see a lot of com highly converting traffic coming from that site. Um, we have a, a, a great investment product, and um, all of those funds, they don't just go into our smart pension fund, it's also, a, we use legal and general underlying funds, so you will have heard about legal and general, I'm sure. They liked it so much, they invested in us, so it, it's a good element, a good, good illustration of trust. Uh, we are Master Trust Assurance Credited. Now that's a very expensive, very lengthy process of just making sure that uh, you can kick our tires. Plus, uh, uh, five stars de facto rated and FCS protected. And, um, lastly, it's, it's free for all employers. Um, um, this is not a sales pitch, but it, um, what I am trying to say is from a disruption point of view, our competitors can't do this because they are paying a third party product. It's a bit like having a, a business and you're using Magento and every time you're you transact, it's complicated, it's costing you something, so you've got to pass that on to the, um, to the customer. We built our own product, so we don't have to pass that cost on. Um, we do charge uh, a small 0.75 bits on the employee contributions, so over a year, 0.75 of those contributions will come back to us. We're not making money, we're not worried about making money today, we're worried about making quite a lot of money later. Um, in terms of feedback, um, we're dealing with um, small employers primarily at the moment, and this, this is the, in, in the stage of day funnel, so we see a lot of very positive feedback, people who are not designed to understand tech. This, this is the kind of person who brings you up and says, we say, what kind of computer do you have? And 
they say it's a great one. Um, it, they're very pleased when they understand, and they think they, they, they got through this process, and they, they, oh, I get it, I get it, you, you made it very clear for me. Um, but it's not just customers, we've got good feedback from um, these advisors, they're, again, they're charging people, so they want to make it easy for themselves, so they can carry on with their day job. So it, it's very gratifying to see that you can build something and then see it return to you in a, in a positive way. Um, a quick thing on our, our competitors. So um, I was showing this to my dad the other day, and he said, yeah, what are you, you going to do about these, these, these weird colors? What is that? No one in the room is going to know what this means. I was like, well, hopefully, hopefully some of them do. Um, green is a good thing. Um, orange, OK. Red, not so much. We call it the traffic light system. Other people who drive cars do too. Um, just in, in simple terms, um, so Nest is the government proposition. If, if you don't use anybody, you're likely to find these guys. But it's expensive for the employee. We're, we're 0 0.75, they're 3.9 in the first year. So that it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not as simple as use the government one. Also, how much does it cost to make a website? They spent 600 million pounds making a website. Put that in your budget and you can make a really great website. Um, they don't do assessment. We do assessment. They don't, there's a whole bunch of things they don't do. And it's, it's surprising to me that you can spend that kind of money. Um, there are other people. These guys uh, are established, but you know, do you want to spend 500 pounds filling out that form just to get yourself into, uh, I've got an account? Not so much. Um, there are obviously some people who uh, we, we mentioned earlier, but they're not in a position to acquire that huge 70%. They, they just don't have the manpower to accommodate the business. There could be people in this very room who are, who are, are wishing to, to create a pension scheme system just like we've done, but it's kind of late in the day for the acquisition piece. So the, the green to red piece balances out. There's definitely bright minds, but you've got to make sure you, uh, you, you, you can have, you've got time to disrupt. Um, so in the space we've been, we've been uh, live, I'm coming to an end, we can go and have that beer shortly. Um, we've been busy for a couple of years and um, we've been I'll, I'll go I'll jump to this one here we've we've got to a point where um, we have 30,000 businesses using us and 100 and that's the slides a little bit old but we have a decent number of employees who, who are sorry it's about a, it's about 200 businesses and a thousand employees a day who, who set up with us um, and we know we've got a, a, a big journey ahead of us with uh, another million businesses signing up in the next year um, and that's us, Smart Pension.